I'm Matt from Automation Fixation. Today I'll be going through how to make the most of the integration between the Apple Watch and Home Assistant, including actions and an overview and examples of each key complication type for the Apple Watch. I'm using the new Apple Watch Series 8 for this demo and the latest Watch OS 9. If you haven't checked out my video on enabling remote access and installing and integrating the iOS app, please check it out first. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to keep it simple. I'll be doing all of this via the iOS Home Assistant and Watch apps, and also the Apple Watch itself. All right, let's get started. First of all, let's add an action. Despite the name, an action is a trigger that you can use from your Apple Watch for a Home Assistant automation. From the Home Assistant app on your phone, go to Settings, Companion App, then select Actions. Tap on the plus symbol to add a new action. Then select a name, display text, color, and icon. In this example, the action will be to toggle a switch. Keep the name simple as you will need to use this in the next step. I've used name, light, text, front light. And then within the icon screen, I've searched for the toggle switch icon. The screen shows a preview of what it will look like, and you can also change the background color. Once you've completed this, save, go back to the previous screen, and make sure you click done in the top right to save the settings in the companion app. Next, we need to link the iOS action we just created to actually perform an action. In this example, I will link the action to toggle a switch. Go to settings, automations and scenes, and then create a new automation. Select event, and then the event type will be ios.action underscore fired. The event data value will be action name with a capital N colon, and then the name of the action in quotes. In my case, we have selected light. Under action, select service, switch, toggle, and then choose the entity. And I've chosen my light switch entity. Click save, and then select a name for your automation. In this example, it is watch, light, action. To use your actions on your watch, you can access this via the Home Assistant app. Simply go to your app screen and find the Home Assistant app. The action that was just created should be visible. Press it to toggle and fire the automation. You can see that the switch turned on, and that's all there is in the Apple Watch Home Assistant app. The next functionality with Home Assistant and the Apple Watch is the use of complications, and this can definitely get complicated. Let's take a quick complication 101. The term complication is historically used for mechanical timepieces and regular watches and refers to additional functionality beyond simple time. Let's look at the positioning and examples of an Apple Watch face. In the picture you can see the placement of the complication, example top left, middle, bottom left and so forth. Now before we go adding in a complication, let's take a look at the different type of complications available. The key ones to note are those that are currently working in the Home Assistant app as of the recent iOS 9 update. And these are circular. These are useful for showing quick round shaped values for ranges and simple status on the infograph and modular watch faces. Corner. Corner layouts show images, text, and gauges in the corners of supported watch faces such as infograph. The large inline layout value can be used at the bottom of a watch face such as utility or motion. These allow icons and text. And finally, rectangular. Rectangular layouts show images, text, gauges, and titles across a large rectangular region. As of the most recent iOS update, templates which are now deemed as legacy appear to no longer work in the Home Assistant app, and they are no longer visible. For those with existing complications, it looks like you have no current option but to recreate using the supported templates until there is a fix. Now there are some limitations with complications, including how they're updated. Complications are only updated automatically every 15 minutes. So this is on the hour, 15, 30, and 45, as Apple limits how often they are able to be updated. You can do manual updates. However, these are limited to 50 a day. So technically you can add this as a service call, but it is limited. And so complications that you want to refresh frequently might need to be reconsidered until push updates are supported. There are also some app delays within complications, and it takes a bit of time for the complication to reflect and be accessible in the watch app. 
you may need to play around and add remove complications until it is visible in the Watch app. Make sure once you create, click Done on the companion section of the Home Assistant app to ensure that any updates get saved. There are three key screens that you need to get familiar with when creating complications. These are the complication management screen in the Home Assistant companion app, the face management part of the Apple Watch app, and finally, the Apple Watch screen itself. Okay, let's go through each key working template using data from Home Assistant. We'll start with the circular template. First example is the closed gauge image. In this case, I've used a binary state for the switch, which will be on or off, and set the formula to return one or zero to add or remove the ring around the complication. This has been added to the top left section of the watch face. For the rest of the examples, I'll be using the printer ink status, which has a state based on the percentage of ink available. Next is the open gauge image. This template allows a gauge with an icon. For the center value, I've used the state value of the black ink. And then for the gauge, I've also used the state value for the black ink and converted it to a float value and divided by 100 to get the right value. I've selected the icon of printer. And then this has been added to the bottom right section of the watch face. Next is the open gauge simple text. Again, for the center value, I've used the state value of the black ink. And for the bottom value, I've used the text BLK. For the gauge, I've used the same float value again. And the difference here is that the previous template is to use a text instead of an icon. This has been added to the bottom middle section of the watch face. The final circular example is the open gauge range text. For the center value, I've used the same state of the black ink. However, I've added a leading value of zero and a trailing value of 100. The range template allows you to specify a different range. So example, if you wanted to show between two different values, however, in this case, I've used zero and 100. This has been added to the bottom left section of the watch face. The next example is the corner template. So this is very similar to the other circular templates that we went through. So I'll just use a gauge text example. And this includes the leading and trailing values of the gauge with a style fill showing the fill line up to the value or the ring style, which shows a circle at the state value along the line. This has been added to the top left section of the watch face. Next, we have the rectangular template. In this example, I'm selecting the standard body. The header, I have got text of printer ink and then under body one, I've got the black value and then body two is the cyan ink value. This has been added to the middle section of the watch face. The next example is rectangular text gauge. For the header, I've got the state of the printer. For the body one, I've got the black ink value. And then on gauge, I've used a similar float converted value. And then style, we've got fill or ring. This has been added to the middle section of the watch face. The final example is the inline large template. For this example, I've added some extra text to show printer black ink and the state and the percentage symbol at the end. The icon selected is printer. And this has been added to the bottom section of the watch face. This will only be able to be used for supported watch faces such as utility. Thanks for getting to the end of this video. Hopefully you have a better understanding of the Apple Watch integration with Home Assistant and now have some ideas on how to build out your actions and complications based on your own setup. If you have any questions or feedback, please leave a comment. And if you found the video useful, please like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.